We're now going to shift our attention towards DDL statements or data definition language statements in MySQL and in SQL in general. We focused on DML statements, which include select, insert, update, and delete. Let's make a section. We'll call this data definition language or DDL statements. Now there are many DDL statements. We're going to focus on alter initially, then eventually create, which applies to create database, create table, and so on. Let's begin by focusing on alter. Alter is very important. We've already shown you how to use create database. It's very simple. Without any options besides the database name, the default collation and character set are applied to the database. Defining the table structure is a little more complex because you need to specify the field types for storing your data. But we've set up some basic field types within our people table within the contacts database and we'll revisit create table. But for now, let's suppose we have a series of changes that we'd like to make to the existing table structures. Let's go to our shell and take a look at what tables are available for us to play with. We'll execute a show tables. As you can see, we have people and people2. Let's select count star from people2 to see what's in there. And it currently contains two values. So this is a candidate for us to use the alter dynamic or data definition language statement alter. So let's select star from people2 to see what's available and we're going to extend, stretch, increment, and so on using alter statements. People2 contains three columns or three fields, first name, last name, and email. We can certainly alter this particular table to more suit our data storage needs. So our first task that we'd like to present is to change the name of the table from people2 to let's say new people2. So task number one is to change the name of the people to table to new people to very simple task the alter table syntax is very simple it resembles the following alter followed by the keyword table because you can also alter databases although there really isn't much to alter on the database side with the exception of the collation character set and the name of the database itself but we'll revisit that. The table alterations require much more thought and time. So alter table followed by the name of the table. In this case it's people2 followed by any set of options that are required to fulfill your data storage needs. Now again this is all in the reference documentation so you don't need to memorize it all but we're going to show you some of the common alterations that are made on a per table basis. So we want to change the name of the table from people2 to new people2. How do we do it? Well, let's copy this into memory. And all we need to specify is the rename keyword to rename the existing table name people2 to new people2, followed by a semicolon, and that's it. We'll follow this command up with show tables. So let's include show tables at the end of the statement so that we see the new name applied. And from the shell, we'll execute. You'll see that the new name. Of course, the alter table statement was successful, and the new name is new people2. So prior, the table is called people2. It's now called new people2. And just like that, we can change the name of the table. It's not a big deal whatsoever. Of course, any queries that are defined to use statically, the name people2 will need to be updated unless we create a view based entirely on the new people2 table name. Now having said all that, let's move on to some other things that we want to do with this particular table structure. You know that the structure includes first name, last name, and email. A describe now of new of people2, let's go with the old name. People2 fails because we've changed the name. However, describe of new people tool, two that is, succeeds. And here's the structure and the order in which columns are represented in the database. What if we want to add a new column to this particular table? to store timestamp related information. So we'll create a column called date for example and that's task number two. So task two 
using alter is to add a new timestamp column named date. In order to do so, of course, we'll use alter, same syntax, table, the name of the table, which is now called new people2, followed by the keyword add. Add allows us to add columns with their definitions. After you've specified add, you simply name the column, which we'll call date, followed by its description or its column description, which includes all of the different types supported by MySQL, including integer, big integer, tiny integer, character, var character, timestamp, date, date time, etc. We're going to go with timestamp because it stores date and time information. So date will be a field that stores timestamp information. So let's add this new column and by default columns that are added are appended to the end of the list of columns or fields. So we have three fields, first name, last name, email. When you add a column without specifying exactly where it should be added, it will be appended to the list of columns ending up at the end. That makes a big difference when you consider that you'll perform imports using MySQL import or use the insert statement and you may need to know the order in which columns are presented, but the describe statement will always reveal that information to you. Let's paste our command followed by a quick describe new people to to witness the results. So we're going to alter table new people to to add a new column called date and it'll store timestamp information. Notice the rows that were affected include two. Now in the event that you're wondering why two rows were impacted, it's as follows. The current table structure for new people two contains two records. Whenever there are records within a table and you've instituted some sort of change using the alter statement, the alter DDL statement, each of the records within the table structure need to be updated. That's why the output results in two rather than zero rows being updated. Each record must be updated. So if there are a billion records, they all must be updated so that they know that there's a new column for potentially storing data. The describe new people to reveals that there is a new column called date or a new field of the type timestamp. Nulls are okay, but there is a default value. By default, when you use the timestamp field type, MySQL will populate the current timestamp unless you submit a timestamp into the field. So what does that all mean? Let's select star from new people two to see how the existing records have been affected. The existing records reveal values with all zeros for the date as well as for the time. But if we insert new values into this particular table, they will reflect values that are now. Makes perfect sense. If you've altered a table but MySQL doesn't know exactly when these entries were entered into the table, then no meaningful timestamp can be inserted into the date column. Let's go ahead and insert a value into this particular table using the insert followed by into and we should keep these keywords as uppercase so let's insert into the table name new people two, and we'll specify the values since we're going to provide values for each we'll specify the values or if you're not simply use set and then specify the columns that you will update including F name in our case we'll set an F name equivalent to this first name followed by a last name equivalent to this last name followed by an email equivalent to the following email and we'll terminate the command with a semicolon and follow this up with a select star from new people to relying upon the DBMS of course to insert values for or insert a value for the date timestamp field and let's try that let's double check our syntax here to make sure that it's set we're inserting into new people to let's see what was thrown and for the last value as you can see we didn't specify the column name so let's specify it as email equals and then try that again. Now it works. And notice that the timestamp information, which includes date, the timestamp field is a field which stores date and time. 
with an accuracy down to the second reflects the what was then the current date and time stamp. So now we have a new value and legitimate information, which means if we wanted to, we could run an update query for the ones or for the records which reflect zero to put meaningful timestamps into them or just leave them with all zeros. So we've added a new column. Let's rerun describe against new people too, which stores timestamp related information. You may want timestamp information for various reasons. Let's say we want to add just some column for future storage, a junk column, which we'll later drop just to show you how to drop it. So we're going to add a column but then change our mind and drop it subsequently. So task three is to add a column named junk of car 20 type which will be subsequently dropped or junked. In order to do so we'll alter table new people to, this is the exact command, we'll add a column or field name, the terms are used interchangeably, field name junk and its type is car 20. We could specify additional options with the alter table statement such as whether or not nulls are permitted, what the default value should be for the column in the event that the user doesn't supply one, and so forth. But for now let's just use the MySQL defaults for the sake of illustrating how alter table works. We'll control shift V followed by a describe new people to. This will reveal the new column junk character 20 nulls are permitted and the default value is null in the event that the user doesn't supply a value. So now we have a new column. Let's select star from new people to to see how the existing data has been impacted as a result of adding this new junk column and what is meant by the number of rows being updated or records being updated three in this case is the following. Each value has been updated to reflect null because we didn't specify a default value. MySQL had to insert for each record the value null and that's what you see here. These are null values. No big deal. They can be updated later on using an update query if necessary. But it is a drunk column which was really meant to be set up to be torn down so how do we use the alter table syntax to drop a column that we're no longer interested in? simply run a similar command to what was used to add the column but instead of adding the column this time we want to drop the column and we don't need to specify the type so simply drop and the column in this case it's actually a drop column statement it's called junk and we'll get rid of the type which is unnecessary which of course requires more time thought usage of the description or the described syntax and so forth let's paste it followed by a describe new people to to see what the effects are and as you can see that extra column junk is no longer there so just like that we remove the junk column but be careful how you use alter table to drop columns that actually contain useful information because you'll lose the information in the rows that actually have values in that particular or have a value in that particular column so you want to be careful when using drop adding is easy but dropping may not be so easy because since DBMS's serve as multi-access backends or centralized storage for multiple clients potentially while you're altering and adding a column subsequently users could be adding data to that column and you could cause data corruption as a result so we've gotten rid of the junk column it's gone now our next, next task is to add a popular column type which is the auto incrementing column type. In many types of tables we, it is beneficial to have a column that automatically increments and keeps track of the number of values that are in there and assigns a value automatically. That's quite easy. So task four is to simply add an auto incrementing column to the existing table. No problem to do whatsoever. Or at least no problem for alter table. Let's just borrow the majority of this command alter table new people to because that is the base prefix that we'll, we'll be using to modify new people to 
and in this case we want to add a column you can call it whatever you want such as ID user ID user underscore ID ID works out pretty well then we need to define some items here whether or not it's big int tiny int we'll just go with integer because we don't intend to have hundreds of thousands of records in this particular table but depending on your storage needs consult the MySQL reference documentation to see which of the integer type fields will suffice for auto incrementing for your particular tables depending on your storage needs once again if you're going to store millions of records you may want to step up to a big int depending we want it to be unsigned these values should be all positive it should not be null and we want the column to auto underscore increment. This is the key. Now, auto incrementing columns, such as the one that we're defining here, the ID column, which currently does not exist, must be defined as an indexed column. So it behooves us to define this column as a primary key. And you'll find that auto incrementing columns are used frequently when performing joins between one or two or more tables that is. So we want to further define this table as having a primary key of the column ID that we've just defined. So in order to do so we'll add primary key and in between parentheses we'll specify that the primary key is the ID column that's being defined. So just to recap we're making changes to the new table or the new people to table that is we're going to add a column called ID it's an integer type it's unsigned we will not accept nulls and it will be auto incremented but auto incremented columns must be indexed and one easy way to index a column is to make it a primary key when you make it a primary key MySQL creates an index for this particular column but when you use the add primary key statement you need to specify in parentheses as its argument the name of the column that is to function as the primary key now of course you can have more than one primary key on a given within a given table but you cannot have more than one auto incrementing column within your table so only one column should be auto incremented and usually one column is more than enough let's paste it and when finished we'll ex execute a describe new people to and you'll see that we now have an auto incremented column called ID and it's of type integer 10 and it's unsigned nulls are not permitted and it is the primary key having said all that let's select star from new people to to see what's in there for the existing values you'll see that each value all three values this big table has been properly incremented one two three but to prove that the auto incrementing feature is working we should go ahead and add a value or a record or a row to this particular table we can do so quite easily by inserting a new record so let's insert we're now insert pros we'll insert into new people two table names by the way are case sensitive within Unix and Linux systems so into new people 2 will set F name equivalent to let's use Diana and L name equivalent to her last name and email equivalent to her email and rely upon MySQL to complete the date and ID columns for us. When finished, we'll execute a select star from new people to. This will reveal any new results. And let's check this out. Now we have a new entry, number four, first name, last name, email, a timestamp which reflects the recent timestamp, as well as the ID. So the ID is auto incremented, and this is a popular column that you'll find in most databases, especially databases that are used to maintain unique information and used for multiple joins throughout your DBMS system. Now, what if we wanted to rename after all these changes the table from new people to back to its original name of people to? Well, first and foremost, let's show tables to see what the DBMS knows about the tables beneath the contact database. Here they are, new people to and people. To rename new people to to its original name of people to simply re-execute what we executed initially. 
so we'll just return a task one and rerun alter table new people two rename to people two and that's it this will rename the t the table back to its original name which means any queries that were originally designed to deal or interact with people two will Re resume functionality and anything you do within the MySQL interface will need to be reflected as appropriately. So let's execute this command followed by show tables and you'll see that the table name has been restored to people2. Let's describe people2 and let's attempt to describe new people2 just to be sure that no pr flush privileges or anything extra is necessary to affect the alter table statement and as you can see the MySQL DBMS no longer recognizes new people too but does recognize people too so now we've reset this one other last trick we want to show you and certainly there's more you can do with the alter statement but these are the common usages for most users anything else just consult the reference manual but it's all premised on some of the basics that we're showing here. What if you want to insert a column, not necessarily at the end of the field or column lists, but somewhere in between, like let's say between first name and last name we want to insert middle initial. That makes sense, it's logical. Well, alter table supports that as well. So the final task using alter table is as follows. Task 5. Add a column named middle initial after f name column quite simple again the prefix is alter table but this time instead of altering table new people to will alter table people to we want to add a column and its description so that's the column description so the name of the column is middle underscore initial its type that will work with or will use which is very common and very easy and most people don't have middle names that are longer than 20 characters anyway so we'll go with a car 20 and instead of just terminating this particular command as we've done with prior ads now we use a keyword word called after to indicate where exactly MySQL should place this column so we want this column to be after the first name column which is F name let's double check our column list here and you can see F names here we want middle initials come directly after F name and this should be fine let's run this particular command followed by describe people2 and you'll see that we now have a new column called middle initial with nulls being the default car 20 nulls are acceptable which means for each of the records that are defined we and in this case it says six rows or that's to describe four rows for each of the records they will have null middle names let's select star from people two and you'll see that there are four records but for each middle name they're all nulls now of course we could update these columns quite easily to a common value or update them one at a time or take the input from a text file that was previously defined or if these relationships are defined in other tables simply select the middle initials from those tables and import them into this particular table so that's a little bit about using alter table we can use it to add columns drop columns add columns at a specific location in the schema that's the table schema we can define columns that auto increment and many other neat features. Alter table resembles create table in that you are able to use the table definition structures with alter table to make changes. But just be careful when using drop once again because when you drop a column you will clobber data that's in it. So you hope that before you use it you consult the tables to see whether or not the column has any data. Before dropping any columns select the column from the table, dump it, and perhaps use some clauses to see whether or not any of the, the rows contain information at that particular column just to avoid corrupting your data.